South Africa have done it again. They've come up with a new innovation. For them, something brand new, unseen before, and they've kept this under wraps for a World Cup semi-final. They have kept exactly the same 23-man squad. Yep, this hasn't happened, I believe, since 2018. And I was not expecting this. So it's opened up some great talking points. So, so let's do that then. The World Cup semi-final is fast approaching. Um, there is the South Africa team. My name is Tim. This is Egg Chasers. And I love rugby. And I just want as many people to know about the channel as possible because it is just me. I've got no corporate backing. I've got no marketing budget. I just rely on you giving a thumbs up on the video, leaving your comments. That helps the algorithm. And uh, hit subscribe while you're there as well. I am English. Um, yeah. So I'm... I'm I do have a fan hat on when it comes to this fixture this weekend, but I'm also just a fan of rugby and I'm always and forever fascinated by the way that Rassi Erasmus and Jacques Nienaba go about their business. And I was not expecting a completely unchanged 23. Like I say, it's been years since that's happened. As much as anything, because of the nature of the game against France on Sunday... Yeah, and the fact it was a, it's a six-day turnaround from one of the most intense rugby matches ever played in the history of the sport, six days later, you're in a World Cup semi-final, and there is no player that is fatigued to the level that they maybe need to at least start on the bench rather than in the starting 15, and there is no player that's picked up a knock. That's remarkable. That is genuinely remarkable. So I, I imagine there's been a lot of recovery um, that's been going on uh, and well I mean after a performance like that kind of I guess on you go keep the wagons rolling so there's no sense I wondered if so here's the things I was maybe anticipating that might happen and again this might be an interesting one to, to say in the comments what were you expecting the, the, the side to be I was expecting I was expecting potentially the halfbacks to rotate from the, the bench to the start. Maybe Fafta Klerk and Andre Pollard might start because that may suit playing England a little more. I was expecting to see Lacanio Am involved in the match day 23 so that he might have some game time under his belt so could be available for a World Cup final. I was expecting... What else was I expecting? I was even expecting potentially Bongi and Banambi to start on the bench and Dion Ferri to start because, well, for one thing, there weren't that many lineouts in the last game. And I'll come on to whether I think England will try and replicate what France did there. But secondly, because Bongi and Benambi is probably the most important player in the South Africa squad because he's so, he's close to irreplaceable. There's no one really that can match him scrummaging set piece. And he's really pretty handy around the park. The fact he played another 70 minutes last week against France kind of suggests that the coaches know just how important he is. So I did wonder for that reason whether he might, he might be taken out of the equation, at least to start. But the fact there's no changes whatsoever. And again, um, I mean, an incredible amount of tackles were made. By, by South Africa, who had to absorb so much work in defence. And again, for, for no player to be affected is remarkable in itself. Whereas for England, we're going to find out their team in a couple of hours. But it, the word coming out is that Marcus Smith will be unavailable because his face ended up looking like a Picasso painting by the end of the match. Um, yeah, so just on, on some of those decisions then, this probably does send a message... Although I would, again, I, I wouldn't rule anything out where South Africa is concerned. But it does feel like, yeah, they've got a 33-man squad, but they've got a 23-man squad that they're, that they're basically going, this is, th these are the boys now. We've, we've tinkered, we've done all that. And, and since 2019, South Africa have changed the style of play. They've changed the personnel. They've tried things out. They've tried 7-1. They've tried 6-2. That's a really interesting call. 5-3. 5-3 coming back into fashion. Like the 5-3 the split on the bench is like, um, I don't know, like, the, like clothes fashions and music fashions always come back round again in cycles, don't they? Like 90s hip hop. 
There you go. Five, the 5-3 five, split is like 90s hip-hop. It might go away, but it's always going to come back in fashion. <laughs> it's being sampled on loads of pop music at the minute. The 5-3 five, uh, five, split has come back round again. Rassi and Jacques Nienaber were trying all the other... In fact, this is what they've done. This is exactly what they've done. They've tried all the other little variations. The rest of the world was going, oh, 6-2 splits. I didn't know we could do that. Oh, 7-1. Oh, okay. They're all trying that out as you get close to a World Cup. When the World Cup actually arrives, South Africa go, no, 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 5-3 split was the way to go all the way. We were just trying that out. But yeah, you carry on with your 6-2. Interesting. I love it. But it feels like South Africa have got their 23-man squad. And maybe this is going to be it. Quarter, final, semi-final, final. I mean, it is only two more games assuming that they make the final, which they're heavy favourites to do so, let's be honest. So Kane and Moody um, probably is just part of the wider squad. Uh, Lacanio Am, probably just part of the wider squad. It would be, this is it. Because they're not involved in a semi-final either, it would be a huge call, wouldn't it, to, to pick those players not in the knockout stages and Lacanio Am not at all, and then put them in a World Cup final match day squad. This is what this is why I was expecting some tinkering. Um, so what does it mean for the way South Africa are actually going to approach this game? Do do you think? As you were, kind of the, the squad stays the same, the style of play stays the same. I think just the the dynamics of playing England, not France, will change this game slightly. France didn't want South Africa to scrummage, so avoided line outs as well didn't put the ball out of the pitch tried to keep the ball in play tried to play fast and South Africa just had the resilience to absorb all of that and then boom hit you on the break I think England are not going to play as much possession as France that I mean that's just a given that's you don't have to be any sort of rugby expert to know that England are going to give South Africa the ball and invite them to try and run it out from deep and England are going to try and basically do what South Africa did to France in that opening 20 minutes. England are going to have to try and do that to South Africa for 80 minutes. The question is, do South Africa, when they receive those deep kicks, do they try and run it out as France would do? Do they try and, I mean, well, France do kick a lot nevertheless, but France keep possession and play with the ball a lot more. Are South Africa going to do that? which is kind of what England want them to do, I would suggest. Or are they gonna, Are we going to see a little bit of tactical aerial ping-pong to see who can get on top of that area? I just, my gut feeling is with this selection, they're going to try and come out all guns blazing and, and put the game to bed by half-time, at which point they can bring on the, the change of uh, half-backs and, uh, and maybe just see the game home. That's just a gut feeling, but I, I don't know. Thing is, South Africa didn't get to use their biggest strength, which is their pack, against France, because France didn't allow them to. I think against England it will be different, and I think, much like the World Cup final four years ago, you're going to see England get progressively bashed up through the game. It's going to be a bit more attritional, and then if, if the game is busted open by incredible moments, it might be like four years ago in the last 20 minutes when England are absolutely hanging out of their rear ends. I am... Um, yeah, God, that's just thrown such a curveball. That's thrown such a curveball. I honestly, and I guess this is it, I don't, I don't know what Rassi and Jacques are, are thinking because... What, and that's the beauty of what they've managed to do over the last four years. South Africa, you could have predicted the way they would play four years ago. And that's not a criticism. They, they had an incredible pack in 2019. They had real game breakers in the back line, but they didn't need to use them. They didn't need to use them. Against France, they needed to use them and they were able to. And so the work they've done in the last four years means that they've got plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. Hmm. I was having a chat on the podcast with the boys yesterday, um, which you can find in any, any good podcast feed. Just search for Egg Chasers. 
And we were just kind of coming up with stupid ideas, imagining we were Rassi and Jacques, but w coaching England, what would we do to, to try and overcome the box in what is a highly unlikely um, result to occur, an England win? And one of the things that was said was just to, every opportunity you get, run people at Bongi and Banambi. Not because he can't handle it, but just because Bongi and Banambi off the pitch is, is one of the very few weak links that South Africa may have because the step down from him, just purely from their line-out perspective, would be massive. And I think line-out is just one place that England have got to try and get some dominance. But when I look at that 23-man squad and I think about the players that aren't involved, and then I think what England would do to have Andre Esterhazen Kane and Moody, Lacanio Am, Grant Williams, Jasper Visa, Trevor Niakane, they would all be starting for England and they can't even get in the South Africa 23-man squad. And as for the other four, Van Staden, Ori, Klein and Hendrikser, they may get close as well. So um, that probably gives you an idea about how I imagine this game is going to go. But as I've said before, if you knew what was going to happen, then there'd be no point playing the game whatsoever. So um, bring it on. The England team comes out in a little bit. I'll review that when it comes out and then I will do a combined team where I'll take the 23 men from South Africa, the 23 men from England, put them into one team and see what we'd come up with. Um, yeah, food for thought. Tell me what you think. Give the video a thumbs up. Hit subscribe.